Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging with Web Show and Hanging with Web Show Radio Hour. I'm GW Pomisher. And I'm Sage Ia. And we are in the HWWS Web TV studio tonight. Ta da! Yes. Um, it's going to be cool. We have an exciting show. We do. Uh, lined up. Um, thanks uh, in no small part to our MBL Entertainment correspondent, Mark B. Lee. Yes. Um, uh, for those of you who have paid attention to the growth of the HWWS Web TV, uh, hanging with Web Show Radio family of, of shows and entertainers and and personalities, Mark B. Lee has been hosting panels and moderating and and conducting interviews for more than twenty five years. It's been a phenomenal career for him, and uh, all through the all through the geek and nerd and pop culture communities um and he knows everyone he does he knows absolutely everyone he knows so many people sometimes i think he's surprised by how many people i, I do i really do think it, it, it takes him by surprise sometimes and i think one of the great things about mark is that uh when he, he meets somebody he really does uh, make a new friend like he doesn't that. i mean it, it, he isn't one of those uh, guys that sticks a mic in your face uh, and fanboys out for a little while and then goes away. Mm -mm. Um, he, he makes a new friend and he collects uh, absolutely uh, amazing people. Do you think he collects amazing people or do you just think that amazing people collect Mark? Uh, that could be it too, because I think Mark is uh, definitely a distinct personality. And I think Mark uh, draws to himself. He, he sort of attracts to himself just good people it does it's good, also friendly folk. it's also a bid for tootsie rolls it is <laughs> uh now uh so guys mark b lee uh, a couple weeks ago you guys on krypton radio know this uh and we on hws web tv you know mark went out and covered the premiere event of the new cbs all access show picard so star trek picard uh premiered and at the same day uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, best known probably for his portrayal of Captain Picard in Star Trek's Next Generation, mm -hmm. um, was given his uh, uh, sidewalk to do his hand and footprints in out at the TCM uh, Chinese Theater. Yes. Is it? That's the old Grauman's Chinese Theater. That's the old Grauman's yes. Chinese Theater. Yeah. Yes, and is. Mark was there on site and he was just. Uh, we, we, we call it remote coverage, but really he was just, uh, he left his phone on while he chatted with people he knew from the Star Trek universe. Oops. Yeah. It was awesome. And we brought that to our Krypton radio audience and over to HWWS web TV and the video audience. And, um, so we said to Mark, Hey, what do you want to do next? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I've got some friends I'd, I haven't talked to in a long time. I'd love to have them come on and do, uh, some interviews. And so we're going to kick off what we hope will be an ongoing, you know, multi-year series of Mark B. Lee's interviews. Yes. And coming up uh, in the next hour, we're going to have a very special interview from the son of we renowned Star, uh, Star Trek writer, producer, renowned. creator, re very renowned, yes. Gene Roddenberry. Um, and so Rod Roddenberry is going to be with us mm -hmm. uh, tonight on the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour, Hanging With Web Show uh, special coverage by MBL Entertainment's Mark B. Lee. Uh, we're waiting now for Mar Mark's getting uh, the call set up. Yes, <clears throat> he's getting his getting his stuff in order. That's right. Uh, and then we will know. Uh, we will get to know everything. Uh, we're going to stay in touch with Mark through the call uh, via Facebook Messenger and uh, through uh, the our our streaming software Be Live. We will be uh, in touch with Mark. Uh, from the waiting room. So you'll mm -hmm. get to hear the interview. We'll send some questions over and, uh, and it, it just should be a lot of fun, it but mostly be. guys look for Mark to just be kind of riffing and BSing with his friend who he's known since he was about 15 years old. Yes. Mark has known Rod since he was about 15 from the shenanigan from, era. since Rod was 15. Mark was a little older. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and from all kinds of shenanigans level, they've done cruises together. They, you know, they hung out mm -hmm. together. So Mark's going to bring Rod on and talk to him about Star Trek and Picard and uh, Discovery and all, whatever, whatever pops up as a topic. I'm excited. I am, too. It's going to be really great. Um, it is great to watch Mark work. And we, we welcome Mark B. Lee to the Hanging With Web Show radio show family. 
uh, as well as HWWS uh, Media. And we're, we're so excited to have him on board and to have him doing what he does so well. He does it extremely well. Yes. Um, so we are getting ready to go over to Mark B. Lee uh, as oh, he... Let me, hold on, let me check. Yeah, what do we got going? Oh, I think we're almost ready. Almost, okay. Yeah. Um, so Mark, again, is setting up the call right now uh, with him and Rod Roddenberry. Uh, yes. Oh, wait, because it's a lot of fun. It's Eugene Wesley. Eugene Wesley Rod Roddenberry. Rod Roddenberry. That's yes. right. Eugene Wesley Roddenberry, uh, best known as Rod Roddenberry, mm -hmm. uh, who actually runs the Roddenberry.com. Uh, it is a uh, sci uh, it is a science fiction. Uh, uh, it was just uh, some podcasts and after shows. Now it is. They're in full production mode. They're going to be doing podcasts, radio yes. shows, uh, TV production, movie production. Uh, they're going to be working within the uh, Roddenberry collection, if you will, of science fiction. Because most people don't know. Uh, uh, um, Gene Roddenberry um, penned more than Star Trek. That's right. He was a prolific science fiction writer. Andromeda. Uh, and that's right. Andromeda. Uh, I, I was introduced to not Star Trek from Roddenberry's, uh, from Earth Final Conflict, which Ooh. Rod worked on. That's right. That was Rod good worked too. on on that uh, years ago. And uh, that was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough on the Hanging with Web show uh, about two years ago. Uh, our own Allison Murray brought you an interview with Jane Heitmeyer from That's Earth right. Final Conflict. That's that right. That's awesome. So, yeah, uh, it, we, we are excited about tonight's show. Uh, I keep peeking off to the side, guys. I'm looking to see if we're ready to go yet. Um, and soon. That's right. Very soon. Very soon. And so we are, are getting ready to go. <clears throat> and again, uh, Mark B. Lee has been uh, meeting folks, shaking hands, kissing know, babies, kissing hands and shaking babies. I don't think he's supposed to do that, though. Hey. Yeah. Um, he's been doing this for a long time. And, <laughs> you know, uh, again, uh, it was amazing to watch him just, you know, hang out with the Star Trek cast uh, mm -hmm. out at the uh, uh, handprint ceremony That's where it. he just kind of you know, just being casual. Yeah. Hanging out with Brett Spiner and, you know, oh, the, yeah. the whole team and, and uh, you know, uh, it's really cool that when he walks up, he's like, hello, Sir Patrick, how are you? And, and Patrick, oh, it's good to see you. And you're like, wow, it, it's just an amazing career that he's had That's wonderful. Uh, and the people that he's met. And um, he doesn't think twice about it. These are just his friends now. That's right. Uh, after all these years. And it's so uh, refreshing. And, and he can get some amazing stories told uh, very casually and you know, very comfortably. And it's great because he really does pull out of these fantastic subjects, personal stories. Uh, mm -hmm. the same stories that we're able to pull out of some of our indie community that we've met. Um, he can get those from this, you know, this whole other, uh, avenue. And, uh, it turns out that our, our, some of our biggest, you know, celebrity, uh, personalities are just folk. They are good, just, folk. just good folk. That's right. Uh, that like hanging out with friends and, and like talking about and ice cream and the, he has ice cream. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, I'm not sure. What is our, uh, where, where's, what do we, we see over here? Oh, what we got yep. going. So, all right, guys, um, we're going to take a little break. And when we come back on the other side of the break, uh, you guys are going to hear from, uh, the hanging with web show, uh, HWWS web TV correspondent, Mark B Lee with MBL entertainment as he conducts his interview slash, uh, we're eavesdropping on a private, private conversation, yeah. uh, with the one and only, Eugene Wesley Roddenberry, best known as Rod Roddenberry. Indeed. Uh, so stay tuned in and stay logged on, and we'll be right back with Mark B. Lee. All right, welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour and HWWS Web TV. I'm GW Pometer. And I'm Sage. Yeah. And on the line, on the line right now, sort of right now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, is the one and only uh, HWWS Web TV correspondent, from MBL Entertainment, Mark B. Lee, mm -hmm. and Mark has already lined it up. Set he, all the all the the ships are sailing in the right direction uh, for a conversation with the one and only Eugene Wesley Rod Roddenberry mm -hmm. uh, from Roddenberry.com. Uh, and so, without further ado, ready? I am ready. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. I okay, hear it. ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Here is Mark B. Lee and Rod Roddenberry. Well, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we do these special shows a lot when I can get a hold of someone of um, substance, shall I say. 
And that's always all the time. Um, we are so happy. You know, it's really interesting. I have known this guy, and and I and I talked to Joe Motes, and I'll, I'll tell Rod this, and, and Joe Motes was happy to to hear that you were coming on to the show today. But I've know I had to do the math because I actually asked Joe. I said, Joe, when did we have Gene, Majel, and Rod on your Sea Trek cruise? And it was two years that you quoted, but the earliest year was 1989. So I have known this guy. Or you're shaking your head, and I'm pulling you up into the. Hold on, I'm pulling you up here into the uh, into the room, and you're shaking your head. I don't know why you're shaking your head. 1989, man, that was uh, that was just 30, a little while ago, huh? That was 30 years. Uh, why can't I get you up here at the same time? That's my bad on this. Hold on, for a second. I think I know. What I'm, doing. I'm trying to get us both on the screen at the same time, but it's been 30 years since I've known you, dude. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? It's been almost that long since I've, well, not since I've been on a cruise, but uh, it, that that was, I had the best time there because I was just a kid having fun. Oh, I was hanging out with your mom big time and and uh, you were, how old are you now, right? I am uh, 45 years old. You were 15 years old yeah. when yeah. you, I don't know what you were wearing when your, your mom and I were in the bar, we were sitting, talking, having a great time. You came running in with something on that that totally uh i i, I didn't know what to say oh, oh i time. remember you, you you remember what was oh, it i remember it's one of my uh, powder moments if you allow me I'll, I'll tell the story and i'm happy to embarrass myself because yeah, go ahead. Um, that's because i'm good at it go ahead go ahead, um, go ahead. so yeah i was I, I feel like i was 17 or something but around that age um, they were having a pajama party, and I don't know if it was 10 o'clock or midnight, and it was in this small bar, or at least whatever it was, this restaurant bar club thing. And so at the beginning of the party, um, Raina, who has been like a mother figure to me when I was my nanny, uh, I still know her today. I love her to death. Yeah, uh, I remember her well. Yep, she gave me this joke, and it was, um, it, I, I hope this isn't too PG of a crowd here, but she gave me basically a, a thong pair of underwear that had a, yep. a, a, um, a rooster neck coming out where you're, you know. Yep your manhood would be. And yeah. um, so just to throw it back in my mother's face, I put on a robe, I put that on as a G-string, and then I put boxers over it, but I put the little rooster head through the, the front of it. And I came with my robe to this pajama party and proceeded to, in front of my mother and everyone, open my robe and shake my hips with the rooster neck bouncing up and down like this. And I think half the people thought it was my, you know, my, my manhood, but um, I ended up spending most of the night doing that. Uh, you were you were a fifteen year old little punk. That's what you oh, were. You were yeah. you were fit. Here, Major and I are sitting. I don't know what we were drinking. I, I I was wine or beer, whatever, having a good old time, just talking. And and, I, and you had your robe on too, right? Did you say that you had a robe on? Right? I, you know, I had some decorum. I just you know a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my friend, we have a chat room here. My friend Terry over in Ireland. Hey Terry, good to see you, buddy. Uh, he he watches. He's a great supporter of the show all the time. He says, uh, what's happened, wh what happens at sea, dot, 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 you know, and, and I'm like, yeah, good job, Terry. You're, you're right. What happens at sea stays at sea, whatever. And Until 30 uh, years later when when your buddy brings it up on uh, on a radio show so you can tell everyone. My bad. I'm sorry. I, I you know, I, I could pull up some other uh, embarrassing moments if I thought really hard. I don't um, remember. I, re I remember one one year you and i and uh, and it was a major no no it was michelle we we did the uh which star trek movie did we do on catalina allen oh 2009 what, what movie oh, was the that first one, the first one the, the star trek the the the, the first remake oh, by jj oh, oh that was the rebate the reboot yes yes yeah. yes yes we did uh we did a premiere of the reboot on catalina island we had a fun time uh during that time but oh, buddy boy hey, hey, anybody who is watching this broadcast right now i'm sure there's a ton of you if you did not know or you do not know who rod roddenberry is uh rod is a television producer and he, he's the chief executive officer of roddenberry entertainment which uh you created in 2001 i do believe right Rod? yeah i mean yeah my mother had uh, lincoln enterprises with some of you um, um classic star trek people might recognize my they, they started to sell merchandise Right in the very late 60s, 70s, 80s for Star Trek, and then uh, took that over, brought it online, and brought the name over to Roddenberry, uh, Roddenberry.com, because I was very proud of Star Trek and my father and, and what the name represented. 
Right, and I'm showing right that's Trevor next to you right now. Yep, now yep. I could have sworn during the uh, the premiere when we were in Hollywood for the premiere for Star Trek Picard, I think Trevor was actually sitting in front of me, one seat over to yeah, the left. He was. Yeah, and you know I probably didn't recognize him because I think Trevor has more gray in him than I remember uh, seeing Trevor. And Trevor is in fact your partner with. Um, with um, Roddenberry Enterprises, and uh, you guys have been together for so long, man. I, I, yeah. I think, I think it hasn't been thirty years, but I probably have known you guys to be together, be together for maybe what twenty years. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I went to high school with him, and um, you know, uh, uh, years after I tried to take on the the business myself, um, I kind of shut it down for a bit because I was having some problems with Paramount, and and just sort of said, you know what, I, this is not my thing. But then Trevor, who had a marketing and business background said, hey, you know, I'm happy to help you with this and brought him on board. And um, Trevor's really been the, the, the brains behind the operation and even a, a, a huge amount of the creative input on it. Um, Trevor does all the stuff I don't want to do, which is a large part of it. So I just take the fancy title of CEO. Yeah. And, um, and then I just kind of just write his coattails. So it's, it's, uh, it's good. He does the hard work and I give him credit. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> excuse my coffee, I'm on the tail end of the flu. No, uh, I, I've been on my back for the last two days. I plan to go back to work tomorrow. So excuse me if I, uh, to my audience here. Uh, once again, we have Rod for a very short time. So if anybody has any questions in the chat room right now, you might want to go ahead and put them up real quick and we'll relay them. Uh, yeah, and there's, if, there's nothing I won't answer except for, sadly, I can't give you secrets to Picard or Discovery or any of that sort of stuff. No, I've no, got no, 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 no. Don't worry about that. I got money. I'm, 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 we're fine. Okay. We'll, we'll get something out of you. I, I love this corporate response, sadly, on those. But everything else, I'll be as honest as I can. You'll give me the corporate response and, until we're off air. Of course, yeah, everybody you know. knows me as being a spoiler-free kind of guy. They know, you know, whatever Rod tells me, I ain't telling you nothing. Uh, much like these three episodes of a card, which have been uh, or about to run or, or finish up or whatever, I tell you nothing. Uh, I love this shot right here with you and your dad. Yeah, um, I, I was happy to spend some time with him on on the cruise uh, back during that day, 30 years ago, and and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Sally, your, your your mom, who I love to death, I consider her like like my big sisters. In fact, she she judged on a Bahama Beach, the men's sexy legs contest. It was, it was her, Robin Curtis, and Denise Crosby. They were the judges, and I remember uh, I, I was wearing speedos back then on that beach, and I bent down and. In, in front of, I bent down in back. No, I bent down in front of her. I guess I said it right the first time, and uh, and I think I won that contest for some reason. <laughs> so um, let me let me ask you real quick. Uh, you have did a billion interviews, and the last thing I, I I have a forte for not trying to repeat things that were already asked and answered because it gets boring, gets repetitious, and anybody can look it up online and get those answers for themselves. So I try to deviate when I can, ask unusual questions, ask some common Ooh. question. Uh, so I'm going to just go right off the back here and uh, ask you, what did you think? Now, I know you're executive producer. Right, right. No, I'll give okay. you, I'll give you a, a, an honest answer. Okay. What did you think of Picard? But I want you to do it in a way, in, in succession of what we saw. We saw episode one. We saw episode two. We saw episode three. Episode two, I do, do believe, premieres tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So even if you have to give it a grade, Rod, what did you think of Star Trek Picard? Um, uh, so I'm just trying to, I, I will tell you the truth. I'm just trying to uh, figure out how to say what I want to say. First, I would say that um, Picard is going to be something that I don't think people will fully appreciate. First of all, they'll love it. I mean, just first of all, it's, it's Picard. So if you like Picard, you'll love it. But you're not going to fully appreciate until you start seeing multiple episodes. I agree. I, I had seen episode one, um, in fact, uh, twice before. And you know, and I thought it was just good. I mean, I thought it was very good, you know, but I mean, it, I wasn't, it, it wasn't enough. I had I was like, where's this going? I need to know where this is going. And then seeing the three together, I was like, ah, okay, all right, this is, this is really going to get good. Now I've read the scripts. Um, I generally only read the whites or the pinks on the scripts. So I, I don't know what they really evolved into. I know both Discovery and Picard evolve a tremendous amount from the producer, the first draft or the white draft to what you end up seeing. So there were there was a lot of stuff that I saw when I watched the episode that I was like, God, I don't remember that at all. Um, so anyhow, uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan of Next Generation. I am a big believer in Starfleet, the Federation, um, the Idic philosophy. You know, I, I'm not going to go into my, my normal spiel here because you, you say you don't do things at repetition. I, 
I sadly yeah. do. I, I go over the same thing over and over. That's okay. That's okay I want with me. To, to inspire people, I want people to do to to my son and everyone else who's involved with Star Trek now. Um, Twenty years from now, I want people to come up and say, you know what, Star Trek inspired me to uh, believe beyond my disabilities, to to want to become a doctor, to to believe in myself and believe in a better future. If Star Trek isn't making you think, consider new points of views and perspectives, and inspiring you. In my opinion, it's not Star Trek. I agree. And I think I think Picard, since they're doing an entire uh, um, non anthology, since they're doing an entire series, at the end of it, I think you'll get your message, and and that's what I'm really excited for for people to look at the whole thing, and go, that now that was good. You know, now I'm inspired. So right. I'm in a better future. And I said the same thing, and it's a fact. Reading the social media comments on episode one. Uh, and how people just went crazy over and 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 just thought it was the best thing they've ever seen, Star Trek, blah, blah, blah. I had rated that first episode as the least of the three that I had seen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if the people going gaga over episode one, I can't wait to hear their outcries for tomorrow and next week, right. um, because you're right what you said in the beginning, you take all three together and it's like, wow, you know, this is even more than just being excited about Star Trek uh, being back on the air, uh, not to mention Discovery. Let me ask you yeah. something about Discovery. Oh, wait a minute. We got a question here from uh, one of my good buddies here. Let me pop it up here on the screen here. He said, what has been the greatest challenge of growing up Roddenberry as the sci-fi community grew to what it is? So your greatest challenge. I appreciate that question. Uh, say again? I appreciate that question. Um, Very good. Uh, well, no, I mean it's it's not one that I always get, and, and I, so I, I'm not going to lie to anyone here. My life uh, is is a, is a certainly a privileged in many ways, and in fact, in most ways, um, the the greatest challenge was I, I'd say almost doing the documentary. I did a documentary called Trek Nation that came out in 2011. Right. The the greatest challenge was trying to look at my father, Star Trek, his life and my story and trying to make sense out of it and combining it all into a 90 minute film. And it's not, and I, I don't mean just making the film was hard. It was wrestling with the, who is my father? I mean, the stories I would hear, I grew from every interview I had and every person I met because we would talk and talk and talk. And I had to learn about a lot of my father's demons. And while I never thought he was perfect and I knew my own side of my father who had his demons, it was interesting to hear these other things and to come to terms with the fact that well, you know, he, sure, he did drugs when, when he worked on the shows. Um, he, he he cheated on my mother. He had many women. There, there were a number of things that I heard about him that took him from this visionary of Star Trek to this human being. But once he became this human being, I was able to identify more with him and say, oh, well, he's as messed up as I am or he's as messed up as anyone else is. And he was able to project this beautiful vision of a future and bust his ass and make it happen. I could identify with him and love him and respect him even more. Yeah. So I, I, that was I, I, the I, hardest part to to see the the man behind the myth. Yes. And you know, behind every great man, okay, there's imperfections. I, I, yeah. I no one's I'm sorry, no one's Jesus Christ out here. So regardless of what your appreciation is of any human being, uh, unless you're willing to accept that there may have been some dark sides of that individual that you are so enamored with, um, then you're gonna be you know, devastated when you actually find out a few truths, then you're going to have to decide at that time uh, what is more important to you, okay? The, the, and who the are they really? Who are they yes. really? You know, people, we all fuck up. We all do dumb things. Pardon yeah. my language. I hope no, that's know. okay. That's okay, dude. Um, and and some of us continue down that road because of, unfortunately, the way life has presented itself. And listen, not everyone can be as fortunate and privileged as, as me and other people. But um, And I, I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I mean that in, in a I, uh, recognizing my privilege. Um, some people continue down that road and some people can take steps to get out of it. And sometimes it's easier said than done, or if not always easier said than done. Absolutely right. Okay. I didn't jump to this yet, but I think, uh, oh, wait a minute. Garrett has a follow-up. He says, uh, and tell us what image is conjured in your mind when you in particular hear the word legacy? Wow. Great questions, Garrett. Yeah. Great question. I hate you, Garrett. Um, Legacy. First, it image, is, first image that came into my mind is is uh, uh, dragging boulders up a hill. Um, but um, I've I've uh, and, and my interpretation was 
carrying on that legacy as an obligation or something that I really want to do. And, you know, I wrestled with the idea of it sort of or this feeling of obligation, but I truly love the Star Trek philosophy. I am a genuine fan of that Star Trek future where we all work together for the greater good, where we all get along. We no longer fear difference and change. I said I wouldn't do my normal spiel, so I'm going to stop there. That's okay. um, but um, I, I'm very proud of that. I mean, if my father were George Lucas, and don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars, um, I would be very proud of my father and probably also working in the industry, but it's a different feeling to know that that my father, in his own way, through Star Trek, and everyone who participated and contributed to Star Trek, they helped make people's lives better. Now, I'm not saying change the world, but yeah. influenced many people for the better. I am right. incredibly proud of that. So I want to carry that on in my own way. Well, it's, it's really interesting if I could say this. Uh, for someone, the only person uh, watching this online right now and doing this online right now, since I'm the only person who have actually watched you grow in 30 years, okay? I've, I've watched you since you were a 15-year-old kid <laughs> up until now, and I've seen you in various times and various years uh, over those 30 years period. And every time I see you, I'm prouder and prouder and prouder of you. Uh, I know what you could have become. I was a little worried when you, you know, running around with your little cock sock on, uh, you know, on board the ship. And, and I said, this 15 year old little punk, man. Yep, yep, no, you were right. You, you were right. <laughs> and, to, and to see you and what you've become today, I'm extremely proud of you, my boy. I am well, extremely proud of you. I really I won't am. claim that all of that has left me, though. That little punk is still there. And I, I oh, 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 I'm pretty I'm sure. Here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Now, let me, let's me let go back to uh, this question here that who had it? Uh, Brady had it. Uh, you are a diver, and, and we know that, that you're a master diver, and I've seen you in your gear. Catalina Island, when we were out there, you went diving. Of course, I didn't go with you, but uh, Brady says here, he says, uh, hi, Rod. Have you ever dived in the Great Lakes? We have our share of shipwrecks. Yeah. Um, when I lived in Toronto, I was working on a show called Earth Final Conflict. Yep. And got involved with a dive company, dive group up there. And we went to seven fathoms, five fathoms, something, you know, a little bit north. I, I can't remember. It must have been, like, was it Lake Ontario? I don't remember which lake it was. But I was amazed because, first of all, I dove in a semi-dry suit when semi-dry suits came out. And for those of you who don't know, semi-dries are exactly what they sound like. They, they're they wetsuits, but they try to seal and keep the water out. Well, when they came out, they didn't do so well. Anyhow, this water was, I don't know, 40 degrees, whatever whoa, it was. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Went in with it, froze my you-know-what's off. Um, oh, yeah. But I was diving with wrecks from the 1700s because it's fresh water. It doesn't decay as fast. Ah, uh, yes, no salt. Yeah. So I by a rudder that was the size of a VW Bug. And it was wow. like in a museum that the history was amazing. So, yes, I have. Not a pro at diving there, but I had an amazing experience the, the two times I did it. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. So uh, Sage has passed on a, a little bit of a compliment here. Information was wonderfully, beautifully done. Uh, you are correct on that one. Uh, I don't see any questions. If you guys got questions, uh, we only got this guy for probably about another, oh my God, 10 minutes. So um, put your questions up real quick so we can get through this. Um, okay, uh, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, sure. What is your, or what was your involvement with that? And what do you foresee in its future since we've already had two seasons? Well, um, I'm so I've been executive producer on that. Um, but if you've noticed, the shows have like nine executive producers. If you look at many shows these days, the title yeah. of executive producer can mean everything from someone who's there every day involved writing scripts whatever to someone who might be the son of a producer um i am not just the son of a producer on the show but i'm also not the guy there every day you know driving the show i think i'm, I'm sort of a tier outside of that we we send in thoughts notes we get all the scripts we get everything we 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 try to we try to bring in the roddenberry element whenever we can or when, whenever we feel it's not there and we've got a very good relationship. You know, we're, we're getting feedback. We're getting people to respond to us. We're getting people to acknowledge sort of what we're saying. And so it's a, it's a good working relationship. Um, but as far as what to expect from it, you know, Discovery has been a very dynamic show. Um, it, it is the darker uh, version of Star Trek. And maybe dark is too strong of a word. We're living in a day when, you know, shows, I'm going to use the word need to be. They don't need to be. But many shows are more graphic. There is more violence. There's more realism. 
Um, and and so they've they've chosen to put that into the show, which I'm not against the swearing. I'm not against the the, the violence. I just I always want there to be though the the idic message. I do want there to be people that are inspired from this. That that you know when we come across an alien, the first thing we don't do is try to blow it away. We try to communicate. Right. Right. Devil in the I is my favorite TOS episode. The bad guy is a big rock monster, or is it? Fifty years later, spoiler alert. Um, right. it was you know who was the devil in the dark. Um, yeah. So I'm not. Yeah. Anyhow, I, I'm and season three is no different. Um, they're taking a whole new twist on it. You obviously know, for those of you who have seen it, the end of season two, I won't yes. ruin it. They, okay. they do something and and causes season three to be in a whole new environment. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited for people to see it. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by season three, too, because you're right. It, it takes a whole new change here. I'm seeing, you know, the castaways on Gilligan's Island probably in season three. And, and, or lost in space if we really want to go somewhere else on, on this. And, I, and, and I'm like, okay, I know we're in the Star Trek universe, but now we're going to discover things that probably was never introduced to us in the Star Trek universe just right. because of this lost in space type scenario. So it should be extremely uh, interesting. Real quick, Lower Decks. What do you know about Lower Decks? Uh, what can you tell us about Lower Decks? I don't As know anything you, about Lower Decks. I really don't. don't. Really? I'm so so there there might be some I think there's some animatics out and stuff like that. I choose not to watch anything until it's done or mostly done or look at gotcha. anything that's done or mostly done. Gotcha. So yeah. I've seen the scripts. Um what I have learned, uh I, I am I am not an accomplished film producer. I am also not in the uh, um animation industry. And what I've learned though, reading a, a script for animation, especially comedic animation, um it, it it doesn't read as well as it plays, at least not to me. And of course, I've heard many people say that. And I'm also not a comedian, so I, I was reading some of it, and I thought it was, it was humorous, but I really want to see how it comes through uh, on screen. Because um, I've, I've been talking to people, and they've been giving me a lot of advice. They're like, you know what? Hold off. If you have any uh, philosophical questions, or you have any, you have any ideas that are that are um, that, that make this non-Star Trek, please mention those to us. But otherwise, hold off until you see it. And I, I actually believe that's what I have to do. Yeah, well, man, you, your hands are full, both you and Trevor's. It was fantastic to see you out there in, in, in Hollywood for that premiere. You got anything, any other projects that you got coming up you want to promote, you want to tell us about? Uh, even if it's secret, tell us anyway. No, know, no, anything? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off the, the line here with you, and I'm going to go like, oh, yeah, right, that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got, so Roddenberry, what we're trying to do now is, for those of you who don't know, we've the business started as merchandising. We recently uh, sold that merchandising to uh, CBS to, to well, because we, we didn't need it more, anymore and we weren't really making any money off of it. Um, and now we're focusing on actually creating content. So my hope is in the next two years, you'll start seeing content come out from us that is everything from podcasting to hopefully feature films. Um, we do, we are, I'm focusing a lot on the podcasting right now because I have a lot of freedom in that area. Okay. Uh, Mission Log, for those of you who haven't heard of it, is a podcast that we started almost seven years ago now, where we go back and we analyze each episode chronologically, starting with the cage, and and do a summary, uh, poke some fun of it, do um, um, some some trivia, and then get into the the morals, the myths, the meanings, and and does it stand the test of time? And I got two great hosts who have been doing it for the last six years, uh, Ken Ray and John Champion, and they really do a great job with wit and humor dissecting it and and not not I don't mean to make it sound dry it's really intelligent and thought provoking and I really appreciate the way they do it we just brought on a new host um, Norman Lau who has started with the uh, fourth season of Deep Space 9 Rory fourth season of Deep Space 9 and we've got I think another uh, 8 or 9 years to go before we're done with Enterprise and then we'll we'll start with the new Star Trek wow um, but yeah and there's a number of podcasts there's a number of things we're doing I hope you guys will check it out. Yeah, you, you ever you ever thought of doing anything on the, on the uh, the movies, the motion pictures? So they did. So they did um, uh, the original series, a animated movies one through five, and then hmm. did Next Generation, and now we're into the fourth season of Deep Space Nine. Oh, I need to go back and find uh, their comments on the animated series. I just happen to adore the animated series. I saw the animated series for the first time five years ago because I always dismissed it as, I know, I'm a, I know, I'm a fool. 
I just, <laughs> for those of you who ever felt the same way, it is 100% Star Trek. Sure, the animation is not great, but the stories. The stories. Are fantastic. I agree. Really, they, they deal with the concept of the devil, but in a truly Star Trek way. I don't want to give it away, but in a true Star Trek way. I was blown away. I love it. Yeah, I, I loved it too. I thought, and I'm big on story content. You know, animation I can give a, a, a doodot about, but, you know, I was really, really, really interested in the stories that went on with that. And it did carry on Gene's uh, legacy, shall I say, yeah. uh, through Star Trek Animated. Okay, we got about three minutes. So if anybody has any questions here, uh, Garrett, I think we answered your question question already concerning discovery uh where he asked what were your initial thoughts of the new alternate star trek with the more gritty less gene story universe are we really saying it's a less gene story well I, I, I know what he's saying i mean i know what he's saying and and um listen you know he, my father is not creating the series so it is less gene um yeah you know um he, he obviously changed in his career. You saw the original series, right? And that was when my father was himself maybe a bit more of a cowboy. You know, he was a World War II pilot. He was at LAPD. Yeah. He, um, he, he was never a guy punch first, ask questions later. But, you know, he, he, was, he was, well, well, needless to say, Next Generation was here, evol him evolved 25 years later when he wanted to resolve everything without conflict. You know, right. he was a thinker. He was more of a philosopher. And he wanted the captain to reflect that. And so... Um, the new Star Trek uh, Discovery is sort of the the younger years of my father, at least my father's vision for Star Trek, where hmm. there is a bit more violence. There is a bit more uh, gunfire. Um, I, I, I still think in that show, generally, the Starfleet characters choose nonviolence. They choose to understand. They choose to learn. Um, the messaging is there. It's just it's encapsulated in action, violence, and other characters that are uh, well, I guess more violent. Yeah, so, well, it's been a struggle. It has been a struggle because I'm sorry. I'm, I'm let you tire. No, I'm no. fans. When when the original series, when Next Generation came out, all the original fans just didn't want to watch it. They said that's not my Star Trek. It's not this. It's not. I was just like that, sort of when Discovery came out because it was hard for me to make the transition. And while Next Generation is still my baby. I'm I'm learning more and more to see and appreciate the messaging within uh, Discovery, and I, I I think you'll continue to see that in season three. Yeah, and and I was about to say that yeah, I'm a realist. I understand that uh, even with profanity, I doubt profanity would go away uh, in the future. It's just something that I don't see anybody getting penalized for using a bad word. So why not show it in? And you can only do it on cable TV anyway. And that's why we've heard words and and seen things in. Uh, discovery that we normally wouldn't see on any of the network television uh, stations, you know, so yeah. I'm a realist. I, I know what uh, all that uh, stuff is going to be. Okay, guys, we're going to totally diverse casting. Um, the casting is fantastic. Shanika, Shanika Martin Green is phenomenal as a human being. She, yeah. When I was there visiting the set last, it was going to be a closed set because she was doing a scene that I won't give away. And, and because it wasn't as risque as they may have thought, she opened the set up. Um, I was able to come on. I was able to bring some guests with me. Uh, we were able to hang out. And then as as I was leaving, she said, you know, what? I'm going to walk you out. And and she just walked out. And she was just the sweetest lady. So it is it is truly a family crew up there. And, and uh, it's it's it, it reflects in the show. I agree with you. I worked with Sonequa when she was involved with The Walking Dead. And I also <laughs> met her husband. You, have you met her husband? I have not. I was a fantastic dude. They are a fantastic couple. Yeah, that's awesome. I know exactly what you were talking about. They were great. Uh, okay, what else are they saying here? Uh, invite him to the cartoon show, my, my buddy Jerome is saying. Uh, you like Saturday morning? You don't remember Saturday morning. Absolutely when you, I do. No, you don't. What's your favorite Saturday morning cartoon? Uh, I, I don't I want to be cliche and Bugs Bunny, but I mean, Daffy Duck, Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd. Um, I feel like that that was this. <laughs> Woody Woodpecker, Speedy Gonzalez, well, Speedy Gonzalez, kind of. But Woody Woodpecker was, uh, not Woody Woodpecker, Roadrunner. Roadrunner, yeah. Runner. Even yeah. though it was incredibly violent, it's funny when you go back and you see these things. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, there's this coyote constantly trying to blow up and kill this this its prey, and yes. it's but anyway. it, it, it's very very violent. You can't you can't uh, uh, drop a boulder on top of uh, you know the coyote's head and expect them to be around for the next scene. You know, right. so right. yeah, it's but still it was violent. You know, good yeah. thing we were different kind of kids back then. We knew not to drop a boulder on our friends' heads because we know they won't be coming back. So uh, that's different. Hey, buddy boy, thank you so much for agreeing to this. Unfortunately, we only have 
had 30 minutes with you. Maybe no you can do this again with me someday. Uh, get a special show or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure I'll, I'll, out. I'll try to think of some good stuff that maybe I, I can uh, uh, say that um, not that I'm not allowed to say in other places. So. Well, yeah, that's fine. Use me as your outlet to my audience for anything you want to relate to us concerning Star Trek, uh, your life, whatever. Um, I am here. We are all here for you. We appreciate it greatly. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to see you in May. I'll be at uh, Nichelle's yes. Going Away convention in May in Burbank. Uh, so that's the next time I'll be able to see you. And, and, I, and I just got an email saying that our documentary is out, or at least uh, pe people have seen it, and they said it's spectacular. What uh, documentary? What are you uh, talking about? There's a Nichelle Nichols documentary that that's that's coming out. So do, do one on me. Uh oh, hopefully, hopefully it was okay to say that. Everybody, um, you've heard it first. Is it well, Nichelle let me just say that I got an email saying there's interviews that she's done. There's footage. It's out there. People reviewed it. Um, I don't know when it's coming out, but. There's something coming out. Let's put it that way. Maybe they'll debut it then. Uh, it's a long time between now and May, but you know, if, if they don't show any anything, don't tell anyone I told you. Yeah. Okay. You heard that, everyone. Don't don't tell anybody you heard what you just heard. Okay. Get on the internet. No. But anyway. <laughs> hey, brother. Love you, man. Love you like a brother. You know that. Love you too, Mark. Thank you, man. And, Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. I'll see you in a few months. Beautiful. Take care, everyone. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. That is just too cool. Oh, I love that. That's just really that too cool. That was a lot of fun. My Lord. Guys, welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour and HWWS Web TV. Uh, I'm GW Pomager. And I'm Sage Ia. And just before the commercial break, uh, you got to hear from the one and only Mark B. Lee from MBL Entertainment and HWWS Web TV. And uh, as he had a phenomenal chat with the one and only Rod Roddenberry. That was wonderful. Yeah. I enjoyed that so much. It was a lot of fun. It's great to be able to send them questions. Yeah. It was really great. Was Thank really you, cool. by the way, uh, for everybody uh, online uh, helping to, you know, formulate questions. Terry McIver and uh, so many folks that were online to, to help, That's you know, right. uh, steer that conversation. And Mark, of course, did a phenomenal job. Always. Uh, steering it uh, and, and keeping it really on task and not books and using the time wisely because we only had uh, Rod for about 30 minutes mm -hmm. and I think we ran over a little bit about That's 35 it. maybe but well, he's a busy guy he is uh, he's got a lot going on we, we were just checking out the uh, Roddenberry.com website yes because that was um, really cool when you which, start talking about yeah that. because uh, you know you listened during the interview he they started out doing merchandising for the Roddenberry universe mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, they did okay. They weren't making a whole lot of money from it, but they were doing okay. And then he switched over to production and uh, streaming. And he's, I mean, they're going to have all this great Roddenberry content. Yes. I'm hoping we get a little Earth Final Conflict on the Roddenberry.com site. I think we are. And I'm hoping we get uh, I know that there's maybe some, some Andromeda. Andromeda. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. I mean, these are just, again, guys, uh, Gene Roddenberry is, is, uh, science fiction royalty and, and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the krypton uh, krypton uh radio audience you are. so You're they already know that roddenberry is is i mean that is synonymous with science fiction in the 20 20th century mm -hmm. uh particularly the latter half um so that was just it was just a great time uh again i we told you guys in advance we did that mark knows everybody on an extremely personal level See, my lord you. the cruise story that was great that was just that was Really? Uh, uh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I had to cleanse my mind. I can never I could unsee never that. unsee I didn't even see it, and I can never unsee it. This is true. Thank you, Mark, for that. Yes. Um, thank you, Rod, for for, yes. for sharing a very personal anecdote. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I mean, it, it is. Fun. And and I loved that he was so uh, forthcoming with the answers to the questions that we sent over. Yes. You know, um, it was great to be able to kind of, I'm loving this platform where we can just send over questions live. Yeah. Um, and not have to interrupt Mark doing his thing. Because normally if we did this on the on the platforms we were using before, mm -hmm. you know, I have to kind of like, ooh, 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 you know, in the corner uh, to try to get a question out. Uh, Yo, but to Mr. be able Conte. to just shoot Mark a message, have him ask the question, yes. line it up, let him conduct his interview uh, and choose what he wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and Rod, thank you very much for your candor and yes. for being so open with your answers. Uh, I, I really do think it was important to look at Rod because, you know, so much of it is said about Dean Roddenberry, his legacy and the things that he brought to uh, modern science fiction and mm -hmm. our community, including a very hopeful and optimistic look at the future 
how you know Indeed. things were going to evolve into a much more optimistic uh, perspective than we currently chart in our in our future. Um, the world ebbs and flows, and um, there are there's so many opportunities for us to lose hope in that optimistic future. And Gene, you know, kept it right on. You know, yes. and uh, I, I wanted to address, you know, it, it's been the elephant in the room for going on three seasons now. Um, uh, Star Trek Discovery is a uh, by for many fans has been seen as as a major departure uh, aesthetically and mm. storylines. And they've merged a few. And of course, Gene in the 60s did a lot of work with, you know, parallel universes and alternate dimensions. We got the evil versions of our of our favorite characters from That's time true. to time. That's right. Um, but, uh, it, you know, a lot of modern fans, people who, who have been watching, I think probably since the next generation is when they really started some of the younger fans. And then they went back and they watched those original episodes and they loved Captain Kirk well, and the movies. Because you have to. Yeah. But. Um, you know, they were familiar with, as as Rod really so aptly put it, uh, Gene's later work as a, an older, uh, more mature, uh, and and amazingly enough, more optimistic Gene provided a a, a future that was uh, a little more. I won't say utopian. That would be an unfair. I mean, it's unfair to claim that any society has reached that point, but it was certainly uh, more grounded for humanity. Yes. Um, and so uh, I love that Gene pointed out very clearly that in those early episodes of Star Trek in the 60s, they were space westerns. Mm -hmm. They were what our modern fans would would remember as Firefly. Of course. It was it, it, because there were there was that swagger for Captain Kirk and there was a lot of fighting and conflict and, you know, bad guys. And we got introduced to the Klingons and the Romulans and, you know, and the mm -hmm. enemies of the Federation. And so there was a lot going on in those days. And, yes, it was great that humanity was able to rise above and we were able to teach these great lessons throughout the galaxy. But certainly the younger Gene Roddenberry was has as much a thirst for action as we all do when we're all young. Well, of course. And so, um, and so we come back That's to why discovery. Picard has a, has a saddle that he keeps on board a ship. There you go. And so, as we have uh, come full circle, uh, and and we've seen these properties evolve, um, I think Rod made a very strong case that you know, as long as the core values of the Star Trek universe are in place. Mm -hmm then there's no alternate reality, alternate universe, alternate timeline, alternate. There's nothing that you really can't do. Exactly. Well, um, and I think that we should be more open. I love that about and there's discovery. a lot, And there's a lot more to attribute to Gene than just taking Gene's words and, and recreating mm -hmm. them. And uh, I think that was really, I think, I, thank you very much, Rod, for your uh, honesty and your candor. And, yes. and uh, because it is, you know, again, it's, we, we've seen online, fans debate and discuss and vigorous discourse. Oh, that's nice. Vigorous. Yes, vigorous, vigorous discourse, discourse. Uh, on the changes that, mm. that Discovery has been perceived to make. Uh, what did you think of the comments on Picard? Okay. I just have to say, because I mm. very much enjoyed that that first episode that I saw of Picard. Yeah. And it really did. It makes And Mark has seen three, by the way. I, I, you guys yes, probably picked that Mark. up in the interview, but he went to the premiere where they showed three Ugh. episodes. Yes. That's right. But because I like that so much and it just made me want, I, I like the way it's going. I see, you know, and I want to see more. Yeah. And now that we've talked with Rod, now I really... Yeah, because really even Rod said after he saw the first episode, he was like, yeah, okay, it's, it's a good, you know, yeah. it's a good Star Trek franchise. But then after seeing more... Mm -hmm out uh, at the premiere wow okay yes. so i'm really looking forward to this and i know we have some great cameos from uh next generation cast coming up we do. and uh <laughs> my favorite cameo i saw in the advertisement no spoilers here guys it's in the ads um yes my favorite cameo is coming up from voyager because seven of nine is one of my favorite characters yes um, and not for the Voyager's reasons you might actually my not, favorite not, not for the reasons you might think by the way seven of nine it'd be very uh, Jerry Ryan's an incredibly beautiful woman, but she's also amazing and talented and a great actress. And she took a character uh, that was uh, very two dimensional in its uh, uses early on and created this fully formed character and brought it to life. 
uh, in Seven of Nine because Seven of Nine, you know, kind of one off, you know, uh, once human, now Borg uh, uh, convert to the mm-hmm. Voyager crew. And over the course of time, this personality and this and still true to the Borg within, but exploring the humanity mm-hmm. as well. I thought Jerry Ryan did an amazing job with that character, developing a character um, in the way, uh, and, and I'm going to make this comparison. Star Trek fans are going to probably go nuts. I'm going to make it anyway, though. The way that Leonard Nimoy brought Spock to life. Oh, yes. Half human, half Vulcan, conflicted between the two, creating a character that is more than the flat dimensions of the mm-hmm. script. Um, and we got to see a lot of great characters develop over the last 60 years of Star Trek. But Seven of Nine was the closest to that performance that I can point to because I can see where she was conflicted, where, uh, you know, oftentimes the... Um, her learning curve was, you know, the perfect mind in the, in the, in the process of learning created chaos Mm -hmm. and it was wonderful to watch. And Jerry Ryan did an amazing job. So that's, I love that as a a study in developing uh, a character. And so I'm looking forward to that cameo and to that interaction because of course, um, you know, it's Starfleet. These people would obviously interact or whatever, Mm -hmm. but, but, but really the characters that we saw interact with seven of nine were the Voyager crew and we, and with, with Picard, it was the next generation crew. So the kind of the, the, I always love it when these unit, when these shows in the same universe kind of pop over crossover. Yes. Is the obviously the common term. Are we having a crossover? We're having a crossover. Uh, yeah, but I love it when these crossover character uh, moments happen. Um, it's so much fun. It, so, Wow. And uh, I don't know. I really I'm, I'm left with I have no questions for, for Rod other than, you know, can we hang out? That's right. You know, maybe maybe not a cruise. Maybe not. Maybe not. A, no, I don't want to see that. No. <laughs> Put that away. Uh, no. But, you know, I, I, I it just he, he seems like such a fun guy. Of course, we hang out with Mark and and, uh, and Mark's a fun guy. Yes, he is. So that's always kind of cool. I, I really hope everybody enjoyed the interview with Rod yes. out on Krypton Radio. I would think, I would think so. Uh, it's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi, so you're getting a healthy dose on the HWWS radio hour mm-hmm. of sci-fi for your Wi-Fi this show. That's right. Because you never know 35 minutes of with. Rod Rod Mary. I think that's what I timed it out at, about 35 minutes. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and so that was awesome. And uh, what, do we, what do we got coming up? Oh, we got some great things coming up. Uh, Mark, uh, I loved it. On the way out of the interview, he thank you, Mark, for the shout outs to the HWWS Web TV uh, YouTube channel yes. uh, and for live broadcast on Facebook and, and uh, of course, here on Krypton Radio. And um, also, uh, well, we have some amazing things coming up. We are going to Space Ghost Comic Con in just about uh, from tonight, about a week and a half. Mm-hmm. We'll be at Space Coast Comic Con, uh, where we intend to hang out with an um, an amazing group of independent creative artists, comic oh, book creators. Yes. Going to catch up with some old friends. Going to make some new friends uh, from 1979's Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Beedy, 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 beedy. That's right. We're going to hang out with Gil Gerard. <laughs> uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and it's, I love it. It's our local Comic Con. Yes. And it's it's David Grayson, Jake Estrada, uh, Chuck Fresh, the whole crew uh, that works so hard all year long to bring a Space Coast Comic Con. They got Gil Gerard. They got some amazing voice actors. Is it fair to call it work? So I think we're going to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. I call it work because I've, I, you know, look, we've organized enough stuff within True. the convention to know how much work goes into it. And I know that Jake and Dave, they have to organize a bunch of people who are organizing the stuff that we're organizing. It's like herding wet cats who are trying to herd other wet cats. That's a lot of cats. That's a lot of cats. Don't make fun of cats. Not on the internet. Not on the internet. That's right. So, um, so we're looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm super psyched about that. And uh, so, and we have uh, cosplay. Michael is going to introduce his latest. Beedy 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 beedy. That's right. If, you get, if you're going to meet Buck Rogers, you might as well meet him as Twicky. That's right. That's right. So, for uh, those of you who are out there and listening, you can go ahead, and we'll be posting pictures. I'm we are, Michael's we page. are, and uh, Gil has On very Facebook graciously Instagram. been following Cosplay Michael's progress. That's so much fun. It's really cool. It. Uh, thank you, Gil, for that. And uh, then, uh, let's see, it, it's just, yeah, that's a week and a half, and then two 
in a following half week. Weekend. Following weekend, we will be taking over stage two in downtown Bartow for Sci Fi Bartow. Oh, everybody's in for a treat with that one. What an amazing lineup all, we've got planned. All day. Uh, we will be kicking off at 10 a.m. in the morning uh, with some great coverage of Sci Fi Bartow from stage two. Right. We have got on our stage, we have got Morty the Monster uh created and and uh animated brought to life by kevin j kessler author and now muppeteer mm -hmm. um we will have the one and only hennessy williams uh doing some stand-up comedy I'm and looking crowd interactions from the, the kitchen killers our mm -hmm. own hwws web tv's kitchen killers will be on stage yes uh they're gonna do a couple of sets for us uh, we also we have new music. We do have music. We have Angel Torres. Who's Angel going to Torres, be that's on. right. Who, by the way, is also a comic. Or, uh, uh, that's right. He is co-writing with Ty right. Turner for the because it's the Turner and Torres, and they that's do right. the steampunk fantasy novelizations. Novelizations. That's right. That's right. So, uh, steampunk fantasy author, singer, singer Angel Torres will be on the oh, stage. Awesome. Uh, it doesn't get better than that, guys. I love it when we're able to take these worlds that we are part of and mm -hmm. mash them together. Squish them. Mash and uh, them. the oh, theme this what? year, Sci-Fi Bartow, is uh, m myths and magic. Myth and magic. So right from stage two, the Harry Potter Sorting Hat Experience, brought to you by HWWS Web TV mm -hmm. and our amazing partners at Kitchen Killers and exactly. uh, our amazing cosplayers so we're going to have the sorting hat out there going to sort some people walking right. down the and street. i just want to say ravenclaw rules so i don't know anything about all that all i know is that i had to organize it so hey guess who else is going to be out there what's that da -da -da -da. the one and only that's right co-hosting with me from stage two all day long will be the one and only josh bauer from j bauer art mm -hmm. he's gonna have some art out there that you can see and uh in the car show we are debuting the Bauer Mobile. Yeah, that he that he painted. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And he keeps the, tweaking the, it. It is, more it more is awesome. Uh, it is the Bauer Batmobile, or the the Bat Bauer Mobile. I don't know how you would classify it. It's a Batman mobile. It's a it Batman is. car. Uh, it's a Josh Bauer art mobile. It is amazing, and that will be debuting in the art show, uh, in the car show, in the art show. Uh, Josh has got some amazing pieces that he's entering into the art show. He just does amazing. And Josh work. has won, I think, four out of five years that he's attended. He's won best in show uh, for his art. And so it'll be interesting to see how he does this year. And see I've seen some of the pieces. Yes. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so, guys, don't miss those things. We have got to wrap it up. Thank you to Mark B. Lee and MBL Entertainment for bringing us uh, a one of a kind interview Yay. with. Eugene Wesley Rod Roddenberry. Uh, thank you guys for logging on and tuning in. Thank Krypton Radio, Gene, and the whole team over there for broadcasting us out to the world. Thank you all on Spreaker, on iTunes, on iHeartRadio, on Facebook, on YouTube, all over the web. From all of us here at HWWS Media, we love you guys. So we're going to keep doing what we do. If you keep doing what you do and tuning in and logging on to see who, who we're, we're hanging, hanging with, with next. Hey.